Hello, everybody. We're going to hit you up with another presidential election. This one, the election of 1960. It's a barn burner. Two new candidates going at it to see who will succeed Dwight Eisenhower as the president. Who's going to get it done? Let's find that out right now. Now we're going to start off with the incumbent party, and that is the Republicans. The incumbent, Dwight Eisenhower, elected in 1952, re-elected in 1956, is the first president affected by the 22nd Amendment, so he cannot run for a third term, so the Republican nomination wide open. And it comes down to Vice President Richard Nixon of California, the Governor of New York, Nelson Rockefeller, and Senator Barry Goldwater of Arizona. At the end of the day, it is going to be Nixon who receives the Republican nomination for president and is going to bring along for the ride Henry Cabot Lodge Jr. of Massachusetts as his running mate. Now that we have the Republican ticket of Nixon and Lodge, let's go to the Democrats. Now, for the Democrats, their nomination also wide open. And aside, the pre, aside, the, and aside from the nominee the previous two years, Adlai, two elections, Adlai Stevenson of Illinois and putting himself up for nomination, we have also John F. Kennedy, Senator of Massachusetts, Senator Lyndon B. Johnson of Texas, Senator Stuart Symington of Missouri, Senator Hubert Humphrey of Minnesota, Wayne Morse, Senator from Oregon, Paul C. Fisher of Pennsylvania, the Governor of New Jersey, Robert B. Maynard, and Senator George Smathers of Florida all put themselves up for the Democratic nomination, but at the end of the day, it is going to be Kennedy, JFK, who receives the Democratic nomination, and he is going to select LBJ as his running mate. So a couple of senators on the Democratic ticket here. Now that we have our Republican ticket of Nixon and Lodge and our Democratic ticket of JFK and LBJ, let's go on ahead to the campaign show and see who's going to win this thing. Now, during the campaign, JFK charged that under Eisenhower and the Republicans, the nation had fallen behind the Soviet Union in the Cold War, both militarily and economically. This election was held during a high time of intensity, during the height of the Cold War. And that as president, he would get America moving again. Nixon responded that if elected, he would continue the peace and prosperity that Eisenhower had brought the nation in the 1950s. Nixon also argued that with the nation engaged in the Cold War with the Soviets, that Kennedy was too young and inexperienced to be trusted with the presidency. Now, both Kennedy and Nixon drew large and enthusiastic crowds throughout the campaign. In August of 1960, most polls gave Nixon a slim lead over Kennedy, and many political pundits regarded Nixon as the favorite to win. However, Nixon was plagued by bad luck throughout the fall campaign. In August, President Eisenhower, who had long been ambivalent about Nixon, held a televised press conference in which a reporter named Charles Moore of Time Magazine mentioned Nixon's claims that he had been a valuable administration insider and advisor. Moore asked Eisenhower if he can give an example of a major idea of Nixon's that he, heeded, that he had heeded. Eisenhower responded with a flip comment, if you give me a week, I might think of one. Although both Eisenhower and Nixon later claimed that he was merely joking with the reporter, the remark hurt Nixon as it undercut his claims of having greater decision-making experience than Kennedy. The remark proved so damaging to Nixon that the Democrats turned Eisenhower's statement into a television commercial. Now, at the Republican National Convention, where Nixon received the Republican nomination, he had pledged to campaign in all 50 states. This pledge would end up coming back to bite him in the butt because in August, Nixon injured his knee on a car door while campaigning in North Carolina. The knee became infected and Nixon had to cease campaigning for two weeks while the infected knee was injected with antibiotics. 
When he left the hospital, Nixon refused to abandon his pledge to visit every state, so he wound up wasting valuable time visiting states that he had no chance to win or that had few electoral votes and would be able to help in the election or states that he would almost certainly win regardless. Um, for example, in his effort to visit all 50 states, Nixon spent about a weekend before the election campaigning in Alaska. Alaska wasn't going to be any help to Nixon because it only had three electoral votes. While Kennedy campaigned in larger states such as New Jersey, Ohio, Michigan, and Pennsylvania. Now, despite the reservations, Robert Kennedy, Robert Kennedy is JFK's brother, had about Johnson's nomination, choosing Johnson as Kennedy's running mate proved to be a masterstroke. Johnson vigorously campaigned for Kennedy and was instrumental in helping the Democrats to carry several southern states skeptical of him, especially Johnson's home state of Texas. On the other hand, Lodge, who was Nixon's running mate, ran a lethargic campaign and made several mistakes that ended up, that ended up hurting Nixon. Among them was a pledge, which was unapproved by Nixon, that as president Nick that as president Nixon would name a black person to his cabinet. The remark offended many blacks who saw it as a clumsy attempt to win their votes. Now, the key turning point of the campaign were the four Kennedy Nixon debates. This is really important. You guys, this is really important in this election. Now they were the first presidential debates ever. Now, if you hark back to 1858 to the Lincoln-Douglas debates, those were not presidential debates, but they were senatorial debates. Abraham Lincoln was running for Stephen A. Douglas's seat in the Senate. And this also and this was also the first held on television. So this attracted enormous publicity. You know, television at this time, you know, really being a new thing. Nixon insisted on campaigning until just a few hours before the first debate started. He had not completely recovered from his hospital stay and thus looked pale, sickly, underweight, and tired. Basically, he was a mess. His eyes moved across the room during the debate and at various moments, sweat was visible on his face. He also refused makeup for the first debate, and as a result, his beard stubble showed prominently on the era's black and white TV screens. Remember, color TV hadn't been introduced yet. Now, Nixon's poor appearance on television in the first debate is reflected by the fact that his mother called him immediately following the debate to ask if he was sick. Kennedy, by contrast, rested and prepared ex extensively beforehand, appearing tanned, confident, and relaxed during the debate. An estimated 70 million viewers watched the first debate. It is often claimed that people who watched the debate on television overwhelmingly believed Kennedy had one, but a smaller audience who watched the debate on the radio believed that Nixon had one. However, one study has speculated that the viewer-listener disagreement could be due to sample bias in those without TV and that those without TV could be a skewed subset of the population. And a little quote here about the about about the study here. Evidence in support of this belief, i.e., that Kennedy's physical appearance overshadowed his performance during the first debate, is mainly limited to sketchy reports about a market survey conducted by Sindlinger and Company, in which 49% of those who listened to the debates on radio said Nixon had one compared to 21% naming Kennedy, while 30% of those who watched the debate on television said Kennedy had one compared to 29% naming Nixon. Contrary to popular belief, the, the scene linger evidence suggests not that Kennedy won on television, but that the candidates tied on television while Nixon won on radio. However, no details about the sample have ever been reported, and it is unclear whether the survey results can be generalized to a larger population. Moreover, since 87% of American households had a television in 1960, and that the fraction of Americans lacking access to television in 1960 was concentrated in rural areas and particularly in southern and western states, places that were unlikely to hold significant proportions of Catholic voters. 
Now, after the first debate, polls show, show Kennedy moving from a slight deficit into a slight lead over Nixon. For the remaining three debates, Nixon regained his lost weight, wore television makeup, and appeared more forceful than in his initial appearance. However, up to 20 million fewer viewers watched the three remaining debates than the first one. Political observers at the time believed that Kennedy won the first debate, Nixon won number two, won number two and number three, while number four was a draw. Now, the third debate is notable because it brought about a change in the debate process. This debate was a monumental step for television. For the first time ever, split-screen technology was used to bring two people from opposite sides of the country together so they were able to converse in real time. Nixon was in Los Angeles while Kennedy was in New York. The men appeared to be in the same room thanks to identical sets. Both candidates had monitors in their respective studios containing the feed from the opposite studio so they could respond to questions. Bill Shadell moderated the debate from a third television studio in Chicago. The main topic of this debate was whether military force should be used to prevent Cuomoy and Matsu, two island archipelagos off the Chinese coast, from falling under communist control. Now, a key concern in Kennedy's campaign was the widespread skepticism among Protestants about his Roman Catholic religion. Although tolerance was beginning to increase after the Second World War, um, that anti-Catholicism is still there. Even, even 15 years after the end of the war. Some Protestants, especially Southern Baptists and Lutherans, fear that having a Catholic in the White House would give undue influence to the Pope in the nation's affairs. Ding, ding, ding. Another person that had to experience this, Al Smith, back in 1928. Watch that video if you want to know more about that. Radio Evangelic evangelists such as G.E. Lauman wrote that, quote, each person has the right to their own religious belief, but the Roman Catholic e ecclesiastical system, I hope I didn't butcher that word too badly, um, demands the first allegiance of every true member and says in a conflict between church and state, the church must prevail, unquote. The religious issue was so significant that Kennedy made a speech before the nation's newspaper editors in which he criticized the prominence they gave to the religious issue over other topics, especially in foreign policy that he felt were of greater importance. To address fears among Protestants of his Roman Catholicism would impact his decision making, Kennedy famously told the Greater Houston Ministerial Association on September 12, 1960, quote, I am not the Catholic candidate for president, I am the Democratic Party's candidate for president, who also happens to be a Catholic. I do not speak from our church on public matters, and the church does not speak for me. He promised to respect the separation of church and state and not to allow Catholic officials to dictate public policy to him. Kennedy also raised the question of whether one quarter of Americans were relegated to second class citizenship just because they were Roman Catholic. Eventually, Kennedy would become the first and only Roman Catholic to become president, and we'll see why that is in just a second. However, Kennedy's campaign did take advantage of an opening when Reverend Martin Luther King Jr., the civil rights leader, was arrested in Georgia while having a civil rights march, leading one actually. Nixon refused to become involved in the incident, but Kennedy placed calls to local political authorities to get King released from jail, and he also called King's father and wife. As a result, King's father endorsed Kennedy, and he received much favorable publicity in the black community. On election day, Kennedy won the black vote, in most areas by wide margins, and this map provided his margin of victory in states such as New Jersey, South Carolina, Illinois, and Missouri. However, it was accepted that the issue which dominated this election was the rising Cold War tensions between the United States and the Soviet Union. In 1957, the Soviets had launched Sputnik, the first man-made satellite to orbit the Earth. Soon afterwards, some American leaders warned that the nation was falling behind communist countries in science and technology. In Cuba, in Cuba, the revolutionary regime of Fidel Castro became a close ally of the Soviet Union, heightening fears of communist subversion in the Western Hemisphere. Public opinion polls revealed that more than half the American people thought war with the Soviet Union was inevitable. 
Now, Kennedy took advantage of the increased Cold War tensions by emphasizing a perceived missile gap between the United States and the Soviet Union. He argued that under the Republicans, the Soviets had developed a major advantage in the numbers of nuclear missiles. He also noted in an October 18th speech that several senior U.S. military officers had long criticized the Eisenhower administration's defense spending policies. Now, both candidates also argued about the economy and ways in which they could increase the economic growth and prosperity of the 1950s and make it accessible to more people, especially minorities. Some historians criticized Nixon for not taking greater advantage of Eisenhower's popularity and for not discussing the prosperous economy of the Eisenhower presidency more often in his campaign. As the campaign moved into the final two weeks, the polls and most political pundits predicted a Kennedy victory. However, President Eisenhower, who had largely set out the campaign, made a vigorous campaign tour for Nixon over the last 10 days before the election. Eisenhower's support gave Nixon a badly needed boost. Gave Nixon a badly needed boost, excuse me. Nixon also criticized Kennedy for stating that Queen Mori Matsu, two small islands off the coast of communist China, that were being held by nationalist Chinese forces based in Taiwan were outside the Treaty of Protection the United States had signed with the nationalist Chinese. Nixon claimed the islands were included in the treaty and accused Kennedy of showing weakness towards communist aggression. Aided by the Queen Moi Matsu issue and by Eisenhower's support, Nixon began to gain momentum and by election day, the polls indicated a virtual tie. And now with the campaign over with, let's get to the results. This election is a barn burner, you guys. Closest election since 1916. But John F. Kennedy and the Democrats win the White House. Kennedy receives 303 electoral votes, while Nixon and the Republicans receive 219. 23 states are going to end up voting for Kennedy and the Democrats, while 26 states are going to end up voting for Nixon and the Republicans. Nixon becomes the first presidential candidate to lose an election despite carrying a majority of the states. And this comes to show you don't have to necessarily carry the majority of the states in order for you to win the election as long as you get the majority. In this case, it was 269. Now, it is also a squeaker in terms of the popular vote. 49.72% for Kennedy and the Democrats and 49.55% for Nixon and the Republicans. Now, Harry F. Byrd, Senator from Virginia, Remember, he was the guy that pro-segregationist delegates tried um, to nominate as the Democratic Party's candidate for president in 1948. He ends up carrying through faithless electors Mississippi, Alabama, and an electoral vote in Oklahoma. So he won 15 electoral votes, although he didn't even run for president. Now, Kennedy is not going to serve out his term as president, and we'll know why that is in the election of 1964, which we'll talk about next time. And with that, I hope you enjoyed this election video. I hope you got a lot out of this video. If you haven't seen any of my previous videos, go ahead and watch those if you want. And with that, we will see you next time.